Let's see, is that enough? That should be enough, right? So we lose pretty much all of our frogs. But it doesn't matter because we still won. <laughs> okay. I mean, if our opponent's gonna let me go off right here, I'm not gonna lie. I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be a stinky person right here. <laughs> Look at all that value. Uh, come on, profit. Sure. Sell some more cards. <laughs> there he is. Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, you all voted on it, so we're going to put together a deck that you all wanted to see be made into something for the Explorer format. What exactly are we talking about? Well, if you saw the poll, you wanted to vote on frogs, so here we are today. We're going to put together something that's really fun, that focuses a ton on getting a value out of cards that enter and leave the battlefield. So without further ado, this is Simic Hip Hop. With their hippin' and the hoppin' and the bippin' and the boppin'. Long time viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. No. Puns aside, the deck, of course, is going to be a Simic deck, so that means it's going to be blue and green. You're looking at an average mana curve of about 2.2. We have 26 creatures, 5 instants, 4 sorceries, 3 artifacts, and 22 lands. Our Simic Frog deck is just looking to get a ton of value as they enter the battlefield and leave the battlefield. We have several cards in the deck, of course, they're going to try to take advantage of this. And then we have a couple of finishers that will constantly keep generating this extra value, just overwhelming our opponent with our card draw, life gain, and eventually we'll be making one or two unblockable frogs to just hit our opponent and get to our victory. But how exactly will we pull this off with a bunch of frogs that mostly focus on dirtling around? Good question! Well, I'm glad you asked. So let's go over, of course, the one drop slot in the one drop slot you have sun shower druid it may not look like it does very much but it does enter and puts a plus one plus one counter on a target creature so it doesn't actually have to be itself and we gain one life this is an awesome little creature that's going to be highly underrated you will see why in a bit when we get to our gameplay footage but again it's really powerful what it, what it does because the card we want to put all those plus one plus one counters on is going to be the one and only valley might caller an incredibly powerful card it may not look like it does much but let's read it to show you what i'm talking about valley might caller is a one mana 1-1 one, one Frog Warrior with Trample. Whenever another frog, rabbit, raccoon, or squirrel you control enters, you put a plus one, plus one counter on the Valley Might Caller. So if you recall, Champion of the Parish was a card that did the exact same thing, but it did it for zombies. So this, of course, will get us the benefit because we have a ton of frogs and it'll start pumping itself up. So of course, if you will, put those Sun Shower Druid counters on top of the Valley Might Caller to start pumping it up very quickly. And with that Trample ability, we ensure we'll be able to get through damage no matter what, regardless of whatever chump blockers our opponent will try to throw at us. Going into two drop slot, we'll have now Dower Port Mage, another really awesome card that helps us with our game plan. So we'll read about this for just a moment here. Dower Port Mage is a two mana, one three frog wizard that reads whenever one or more other creatures you control leaves the battlefield without dying, of course, you get to draw a card. And then its secondary ability allows you to pay two mana and tap it to return another target creature you control to its owner's hand. In other words, this is going to be one of our engine pieces here that once we put it out there, we want to start trying to just bounce things away, even if we don't use its ability to ensure we can keep drawing cards and keeping our hand full to make sure we have a ton of action against our opponent. As far as the remainder of the two drops, we'll have Pawn Profit here, a simple little frog that just enters and helps us draw a card, not much else, but we can also use this as another engine piece to help keep churning through our deck with our special abilities such as Dower Port Mage. And then we also have a single copy of Three Tree Scribe, so not really too much else with this, but again, it'll help put plus one plus one counters on a creature we control whenever another creature leaves the battlefield, without dying of course, so it's actually really great for us to help support the game plan overall. Going into the three drop slot, we'll have Long River Lurker, another card that also I have to talk about for just a hot second here. So, this card is really awesome for what it does. It's a three mana, two three frog scout, and it also has ward one for small amounts of protection. Other frogs we control, however, will also be gaining ward one with this ability. And when the river lurker enters, target creature you control cannot be blocked this turn. Whenever that creature deals combat damage this turn, you may exile it. And if you do, you can return to the battlefield under its owner's control. So there's many ways you can actually take advantage of that ability. Ideally, you can use this as a way to help get Valley Might Color unblockable to help off finish of an opponent if it gets a ton of counters on it. Or you can use this on, say, a weaker creature like Pawn Profit here to get in just a little extra damage and then get us a ton of extra card draw with its ability. Or you can also use it with Dower Port Mage to then again get some more card draw as the card leaves the battlefield and returns. 
tons of tons of ways of taking advantage of that ability. And of course, it's pretty easy to say the ward one doesn't seem like it does much, but it should be just enough to at least give us a little bit of protection with our game plan. The only other three drop we have is going to be our pseudo ramp option here, which is cliff top lookout here. This simple little frog scout also has reach, which is kind of cute for us because we do need a way to help protect ourselves against flyers. But otherwise, it enters, just reveals cards from the top of our library until we get a land card. We throw that onto the battlefield tapped and then, of course, put the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. Simple enough, just helps us again keep the game plan going. And then the final card in the four drop slot for our creatures will be Lily Splash Mentor. Just a single copy is all we need, but it also just helps us with our game plan. Its ability, of course, by paying three, allows us to then just blink something back, i.e. exile the target creature we control, and then return to the battlefield. It'll get a plus one, plus one counter on it, so certain cards might actually be helpful with this ability, but we don't worry about the plus one, plus one counter ability. All we're just trying to do, of course, is just take advantage of that blinking ability to get a ton of extra value with all of our triggers that we get whenever we enter with creatures. To support our frog game plan here, we're going to then go over our non-creature spells. We have Splash Portal here. It's a simple little sorcery, but it's got a ton of value for what it's costed. For only one blue mana, we can then exile the target creature we control, and then return it to the battlefield. And then, of course, since we have frogs, we'll be able to get also a card out of the deal. Great for what we're trying to do here. And again, it's slow, but it is very effective. In the two-drop slot, we'll also have Simic Charm here. So a couple of copies of these. This is also another really awesome card to help us with our game plan here. We can either pump up one of our creatures with a plus three, plus three until end of turn. We can protect all of our permanence with hexproof or we can bounce something back to our hand to then hopefully get a little extra value maybe something like a pawn profit with a dower port mage out or maybe we can reuse long river lurker you basically get the idea on that now as for the four drop slot here we have a really cute named card here polywallop that's adorable by the way but realistically this card also will not actually cost you four mana this will again will be one less to cast for each frog we control and then target creature you control will deal damage equal to twice its power to target creature we don't control so this is going to be our pseudo removal if we get to a certain point where we just need to get something out of the way and then since we are getting a ton of enter triggers to then get a ton of value we of course had to do the one and only panharmonicon so to put it another way if say like palm profit comes down you'll get to draw two cards out of that if sun shower druid will enter you'll get two plus one plus one counters and you'll gain two life it's again super awesome value for what we're trying to do for your land base it's going to be as simple as possible we are a budget deck so we're just going to maintain just simply seven islands a lily pad village here which is going to be great we're mostly a creature deck and also that's ability of surveil too is actually going to be sometimes helpful depending on the matchups seven forests we'll have an oak hollow village again another card that again can be very situational with what we're trying to do but that's third ability of being able to put a plus one plus one counter on each frog we control that enter the battlefield this turn is actually going to be very helpful in select situations and since we are all in on creatures with only maybe just a couple of non-creature spells the two creature lands will of course help us out to make sure we can fix what we need when we need to cast our creatures on time and as always if you're interested of course in taking this a best of three here's going to be what i recommend for you for your sideboard you'll have copies of spell pierce here going to be able to counter some non-creature spells with that you also have a couple more counter spells in negates and disdainful stroke if you need to cast it against anything bigger out there your graveyard hate will be soul guide lantern again my only one i always recommend for you to then utilize if you choose any kind of graveyard hate for select matchups we may have to deal with we'll also have decisive denial here you can choose one here where you can either use one of your frogs to fight something to get rid of it, or you can counter a non-creature spell as long as your opponent doesn't pay three. Another copy of Simic Charm will be here. Garrick's Uprising may seem a little odd, but in case we do end up pumping up some of our other frogs with our plus one plus one counters, you can bring this in to make sure that your opponent can't chump block you for days by giving all of our creatures trample. We have Primal Empathy here to help us again pump up all those creatures that we have with plus one plus one counters as the game goes long. So this is mostly again for the mid or long range type of games. And again, to round it out, a couple extra copies of Polywallop if you just want to do more instant speed removal but otherwise the simple question we just need to ask ourselves is is it possible for a bunch of frogs to get a ton of extra value on a budget in the explore format it's a bold strategy cotton let's see if it pays off well there's only one way to find out so i don't know about you but i'm super excited to see what frogs can do let's see how much value we can get out of our cars by taking this into the explore format and see how well it does but before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Can our frogs hop to it and get us a win here in Explorer? Well, the good news is we have our creature land, so we definitely can cast our creatures on time. We unfortunately don't have regular mana for the splash portal or the poly wall, but that's okay. Hopefully we'll get at least one or the other to then make sure we can clear a path for our frogs. Unclaimed territory, and we'll do it on frog. The only downside about that is our opponent now kind of has an idea of what we might be doing by naming frogs early. But we'll see. Soul Scar Mage. Alright. So, might be some kind of burn deck, aggro deck. I guess we'll see. Name frogs again. 
Dower Port Mage. Okay, come on, deck. Give me at least one regular land, and we should be good to go. Monastery Swiss Fear. They swing. We'll let it go for now. At 18. So I'm guessing it probably has a light of the stage in hand. Oh, it's two of the critics. All right. Well, they don't get full value off of that, but they do also waste their burn spell. Tower Port Mage number two. Wow, we didn't we missed our land drop there. So that's awkward. Hopefully that won't come back to bite us. Another land. Opponent swinging again. Play with fire. That kind of stinks. On the other hand here, one of the best advantages we have at least as a bounce deck is we can also blink away these cards, and then we can definitely reset them without minus one, minus one counters. Assuming, of course, they survive. Light up the stage. All right, well, there goes their card draw. They got another land. They got a Reckless Impulse. Get to Lava Runner. For full power. Okay, Secluded Courtyard's okay, but it's not quite what I want. So here's how we do this. Frog. And... Well, Cliff Top Retreat is going to have to be the option here. Okay, so at least we got one green source, so that's fine. Reckless Impulse for opponent. They're actually going off. Usually I always end up running out of gas as a, as a mono red player. But somehow our opponent is chaining stuff together, so I guess that's working out for them. Wizard's Lightning. This is it. Are we done? Down to three. Ouch. Okay. Valley of Might Color. Mm, not what I want to see now, but I guess we'll have to make it work. So with that... Long River Lurker. We'll target here. And how do we do this here? Oh, Valley of Might Color, I guess. That's our far best option here. Left top lookout. Swing. Counter 19. Bounce it away. This will give us some card draw, which is nice. Another forest, Panharmonicon. All right, well, that didn't quite get it for us, everybody. This is awkward. Another land for our opponents. They have three cards in hand. If they have burn, we are basically done. Wow, they did not actually do anything? Okay, interesting. Well, that does give us hope that we actually are not dead. So with that, Polywallop. What do we take out here? I think we take out the Soul Scar Mage. That's gone. Okay, how do we do this here? I think we need to bounce something. Okay. We will bounce away. This is unfortunate, but okay. Valley of Might Caller. We have to do that in order for us to actually get the value out of it. Let me draw a card. Pawn Profit's actually not too shabby here, too. So with that, Pawn Profit. We get more value. Okay, a forest. Again, same... Not ideal, but it's fine. We can make it work. At the very least, we still have blockers. That's all we need. But ideally, we need to somehow get a Panharmonicon, blink stuff, or at least get life gain, and then we should be stable. They do. Okay. Well, anything at this point will kill us. <laughs> I'm in danger! Come on, deck. Keep me alive a little bit longer. No burn spells, opponent. No burn spells. Wow, they actually don't have anything? I'm shocked. Monetary Swiss here, number two. Come on, deck. Where is our islands? We need those. That's what we need right now to actually get us going here. So, we can't put down the Panharmonicon yet, so we'll just keep blinking Pawn Profit. Draw another card. Okay. Clifftop Retreat. Again, still not ideal. But otherwise, he'll probably do this. Clifftop Retreat. Look out. I don't know why I'm saying retreat. That's a whole other card here. But you get the idea. Pump, pump. Name Frog. Forest. Pawn Profit again. Wow. No islands. This is so awkward. Another Pawn Profit. Okay. I guess we will swing with Valley Might Caller here. Down to 16. If we could just get at least one of our other one drops, they can gain us life. We can stabilize, and we'd be perfectly fine here if we just get that life gain. Wow, okay, so they have another mountain. I guess our opponent finally ran out of gas. There's our island. Much better. Okay, so with that, island. So with that, and then... Okay. I think we could pull this off here. Bounce away. Get a ton of value. Another island. 
some life. There's all our islands. Okay, well, they all came to us now. I guess that helps, sort of. And Harmonicon. Pawn Prophet. Well, I mean, now we're starting to build up our Valley Might Collar, so we're slowly catching up. Holly Wallop. We will take out... I guess it doesn't really matter what we hit here, but okay. Monster Swiss here. Let's make sure it doesn't get bigger. Valley Might Collar swinging. Wow, we actually are somehow stabilizing. I mean, we still are close to dying, like at any moment here. But we'll see. Can we actually survive against Burn this late? Monster Swiss here number three. Wow, literally our opponent's out of gas. I can't believe this right now. We actually might pull this off. Okay. Well, let's see. Get some more pump here. Bounce away. Pawn profit. <laughs> we actually are somehow alive. I cannot believe this right now. Pawn profit again. Oh my goodness. My color number two, number three. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's see here. Splash portal on Pawn Profit. <laughs> Our opponent right now is failing to hit us here. Oh, my goodness. This is wild. Simic Charms. Okay, I think we have enough now to win. We have Sun's Shower Druid here on my color. We gain some life. There we go, everybody. <laughs> we somehow did it. Yes. Wow. Mono Red Burn literally ran out of gas. We were down to one life, and they just couldn't commit to the win. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Let's see if we can make a splash with our frogs. And it looks like, all right, so the good news is we definitely have our Valley Might Collars, but we don't have a way of casting them. This is kind of awkward here. Maybe let's mull again to see if we can get better mana. Okay, well, this should be fine. So let's go ahead and keep this. Tower Port Mage, extra copy goes to the back. Uh, opponent, ready there? Anytime now, opponent. Okay, well, opponent might not be there, so this might be a no. This might be a free win. We'll see. One eternity later. Oh, they actually are there. That's Swamp. Okay, well, that's awkward, but okay. They still have any way the Thought sees, so this is also going to be very annoying. Alright, that's what I figured. Alright, well, we got another Clifftop Lookout, so that should be okay. Well, at least we'll get our ramp on, so that's not too bad, right? Alright, another Swamp. Okay, no play. Interesting. Still fine. Clifftop Lookout. So even if they blow this up, we can still, of course, get a land regardless. Go for the throat. Surprise. That's okay. We still got our land. Lily Splash Mentor actually is not too shabby either. My Rexian Arena. Alright. Well, our opponent definitely wants to start doing their thing, so we'll see how well we can do here. Get another land out. Alright. We'll hold on to the Splash World just a little bit longer. Hopefully, at least we can get one creature that'll help us draw a card. Letter. Okay, so I think they're going to try to go off here, but that's okay. We have a way of getting through a blood letter, so that's not too shabby. So here's how we do this. So, Forest, Lily Splash Mentor. We will then take out the blood letter. No, 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 opponent. No sneakiness there. Okay, with that, let's swing down to 16. All right. We literally have just one card in hand. Our opponent has a full hand still. Come on, deck. Hoping you can give us at least one card draw spell. Anything will do. Another Swamp. Gray Merchant. Not for full value. That's okay. There we go. Okay, much better, much better. This is actually what we need. So, Pawn Profit. Draw a card. Another Forest. Okay. Blink with Splash Portal. Here come the shenanigans. Everybody draw another card. Ooh, Polywall. That's actually pretty sweet, too. Okay, and then with that, we can then blink this again. <laughs> there we go, everybody. That's how you do it. You basically are able to now draw all the cards you need off of that. Okay, so with that, we're going to go swinging. Will our opponent take the bait? Down to 14. All right, so we'll draw another card. Not too shabby, right? You're able to see right there. We got... 
couple cards off of that one, so we were able to just keep our game plan going, and now we're set. Rush of Dread, okay. Let's see, how do we do this here? Okay, so with that, that's okay. I have an idea here. We could bounce back Pawn Profit, and then we will lose Cliff Hop Lookout. Okay, that didn't hurt as bad. Not too shabby. Great Merchant, down to six. Ooh, Dower Port Mage is also pretty good here, too. So, here's how we do this. Dower Port Mage. Pawn Prophet. Draw a card. Ooh, my goodness, Panharmonicon. Alright, so. Panharmonicon. Polywalla. Take out their Grey Merchant. <laughs> Alright. Well, this is doing its thing. But it is, as you can see, we are a little slow. But we are closing the gap against our opponent here. As long as they don't have any more Garys or Life Green and Drain Shenanigans, we should be okay. A few moments later. Get to the Etherborn. Alright. A little much. Oh, great Merc. Well, this stinks. Alright. Well, they got us their Xaxes. So, that kind of stunk. Man, we were close to stabilizing there pretty well. Alright, my fire friends, here we go. Can our frogs make a splash and explore? Well, the good news is, we definitely have ways of then blinking stuff here with drawing cards and ramping so this is actually not too shabby again it doesn't do that much damage in the early game but that's okay we're just hoping to see if we can outvalue our opponent and hopefully we'll overwhelm them with what we got put down an island first two pawn profits is not bad and a clifftop lookout our opponent is playing let's see are they playing aggro oh maybe they are okay run away and see Ooh, okay wow that's been a while since i've seen that card i do like the card we've used it before in combos which is actually kind of fun but we'll see. Can our opponent outdo us here? Let's draw a card by having our pawn profit enter. Remember, kids, it's enter now. No longer enters the battlefield. They go swinging. Obviously, they must have something in hand, so we will not block for now. We'll see if they try to pump this up. Down to 19. Okay. Light of the stage. Okay, what do they have in here? They have Chandra's Spitfire. Okay. Hmm. I guess they're going to try to... Try to get sneakily by with this. Interesting combo, though. We'll see if it's enough. Okay. I feel hazard. Okay, so they had removal anyway, so that's fine. So, island. Cliff top lookout. Let's we'll start getting our ramp on. Another island, that's fine. No attacks. We definitely have at least a lot of card draw. We just need to start stabilizing quickly with our Sun Shower Druid, and we need to start pumping up with a big creature here. Otherwise, we will be struggling a bit. Not gonna lie, though, our opponent definitely has a very jank combo here. It feels like I'm playing a deck from, like, 2019. We just need to stem the bleeding. And if our opponent does not cast any spells, we can slow them down with their burn. So this is fine. Do they cash it in? Okay, they do. Chandra Spitfire coming down. It is a little scary, but we'll be okay, everybody. So with that, Pawn Profit first. Start drawing some cards. Oh wow, we have like all the copies here. I guess that's fine. Long Ripper, Lurker. Okay, so we do get protection. We'll aim for this one. If we can get to our Polywallop also, that would help us out. Sorry opponent, you can't block any of them. It's a free hit on us. Only one point of damage, but the blink value right here is where we're really looking forward to. Opponent, you can't block it. It's just going to do damage. Just let it go. Okay. There we go. Finally. Exile. Bring it back. Get a little bit more card draw. There we go. That's what we need. Our Valley Might Color is all we need to start going off. But we do need to, of course, to find a way to stabilize quick. Because if they start pumping up that Spitfire, that's going to hurt us a lot. Either that or we need removal. ASAP. Oh my goodness. Second Spitfire. We might be in trouble here. They have one card, though. So this is going to be a little scary. But we'll see. We need to stem the bleeding as much as possible, so we'll then just block with the steam can. We have enough pawn profits, so this is fine. Ooh, panharmonicon's not bad either. Valley might call her. So we can start getting at least one big creature going. Cliff top lookout. Get my ramp going. Next turn, we might be able to put down a panharmonicon if we can afford to take a turn off. That I think is probably our best option here. We will. Blink away, Long River Lurker, for just a moment. Get a card. Ooh, our Sun Shower Druid. Okay, that's what we need. That's what we need to start going off. Pawn Prophet. 
There's the value, everybody. We're getting it now. Swing again. Right down to 18. I know, it's not much, but again, the whole point of our frogs is we just keep blinking them, getting a ton of value, keeping our hand full, pumping up our big creatures that we need to, and yeah, it's doing its thing. Although, again, I'm terrified right now, as soon as our opponent has at least any kind of uh, non-combat damage, these Spitfires are going to go off, and we will be in trouble. Come on, opponent, anytime now. You literally have one card in hand, and we have Ward 1 on all of our creatures. There we go. Well, we definitely have ways of keeping ourselves alive now. We just need to get down key stuff and we should be good to go. Play with fire. All right, that's fine. He has to pay extra for the ward. He does. All right, well, they crack. They do, okay. Never a Okay, so that's their final card. All right, so they're gonna do a big swing here, I'm guessing. Really, opponent? You want to swing with those? Okay, so they turn it off, so it's unblockable. We're down to 10. Okay. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. So I think we can do this, everybody. I think we can do this here. So we'll call Frog. We will play Panharmonicon. That's what we need right now. Oh my god, this is going to be hilarious here. Sun Shower Druid. <laughs> oh my goodness. Woo, look at all that value. This is what we need, everybody. All that life gain. Sun Shower Druid again. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Can we do it right here? Can we pull this off? I don't know. Okay, I don't know yet. Okay, so with that. Splash Portal. How do we do this here? Okay, so. Okay, do this here. Get some more value. And I guess we'll do it on the Valley Mic Core too. Swing here. Down to three. Nice. I suppose we probably could have win with Sun Shower Drew getting pumped here, but I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling a little greedy right now. <laughs> I just wanted to get all the value off. Woo! Not too bad, right? We'll not exile that. Okay, opponent. You have one turn to beat us <laughs> with, our, with your cards. Wow, they could not get any triggers off of that Spitfire? That kind of stinks. I mean, I kind of feel bad for them, but at the same time, I'm okay with this. So they're going to get all their pump in. We can just chump block here. We'll be fine. So that's eight damage in the sky, which is the only thing we got to worry about. Actually, hold on. That'll be 10 hand damage in the sky. Okay. So all we just got to do is just block here, and we should be good to go. As long as you can do basic math, you'll be fine. So with that, let us King Street Roger. Fever Champion. Fever Champion. And run away Steamkin. See, is that enough? That should be enough, right? So we lose pretty much all of our frogs. But it doesn't matter because we still won. <laughs> okay. I mean, if our opponent's going to let me go off right here, I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to be... I'm just going to be a stinky person right here. <laughs> Look at all that value. Uh, come on, Profit. Sure. Draw some more cards. <laughs> there he is. goodness okay i know i could have won earlier but i just wanted to see how much value i got but there you go everybody that's what i'm trying to do with the deck and there you have it so that was our simic hip-hop frog deck for you in explorer and you tell me in the comments below what do you think would you play this deck in any way shape or form truth be told i'm actually really satisfied with how the deck turned out it is hilarious the amount of crazy value you can get from your cards if you can get down at least that one panharmonicon that's basically lights out for your opponent because you're going to outvalue them so much by getting life gain, ramp, and card draw. They just will not be able to keep up. Having said that, however, there are some matches, as you saw today, we did have at least one where we kind of got outvalued by our opponent because they were just faster with their game plan. Still, I wouldn't take that away from this deck in any way because I was, again, really blown away with the fact that we were able to get down a Panharmonicon against a mono red deck that ran out of gas and we just went to town on them. Having said that, one of the biggest weaknesses I do want to remind you for the deck is if your opponent has a ton of removal, that's where the deck is going to feel a little bit on the bad side. If they have Wraths also, that's going to be something else that might hurt us quite a bit. But still, I would definitely say if you do like creature decks with a ton of dirtily value by drawing cards and blinking, this is definitely your deck. Now, having said that, 
If you've stuck around this far into the video, you are my true fiery friends, and I will of course reward you by showing you how you can upgrade this deck even more to make a bigger splash against your opponents. Now, if you're looking to upgrade the deck, this is what I would recommend for you. To be perfectly honest, most of the main deck already is kind of good as is, as we already have pretty much a decent setup for our game plan regarding our frogs. However, there are a couple of key cards I would probably add in now just to kind of make things a little bit more consistent and a little bit better overall. Since we are Simic, we could take it advantage of course of Clement the Worry Board here, just a single copy of him, however this gives all of our frogs the ability to become mana dorks, so that means we can cast things a lot easier and we can do a lot more blink shenanigans with the fact that we can just utilize them to keep tapping them, bring them back with cards like Splash Portal or do our Port Mage and we can definitely do a lot more with that. Speaking of then taking advantage of the extra mana we'll be able to acquire with this, we'll also throw in a single copy of Lily Splash Mentor here. Just that single copy is enough however because it will cost us three mana every single time we need to do its blink ability it has itself. Also, the only downside is you can only do this at sorcery speed. So that's also one of the other things to just keep in mind with this deck. Otherwise, in terms of the other main upgrades, and I say this every single time, but again, I'm going to say it once again. Please, as always, upgrade your mana base. That's always the number one thing you should always do before you upgrade any of the other cards in the main deck. And as always, shouldn't be no surprise, just get all the dual lands that you can get. Yami Via Coast, Breeding Pools, Botanical Sanctums, of course, the Pathway Lands, if you can afford those as well. Keep a single copy of Oak Hollow Village and Lilypad Village just to make sure we can get a little extra value out of these lands so that way we can still surveil if we need to just to get tough off the top if we can. Or you can, as you do more blinking, you can put more plus one plus one counters on all of our frogs to do a lot more damage and close out the game a lot faster. Same thing, of course, with the sideboard. You don't have to do too many crazy things. You actually could keep it as is from the original budget version. But if you are interested in doing something a little spicier, most of the options I would recommend for you be first off, get Hadama's Climb here. This gives you a much better way of getting consistently plus one plus one counters on all of your creatures and if you can flip the land of course into the winged temple of Horaska, this means that all of your frogs if you do utilize this ability can give them flying and gives you a hilariously easier way to avoid evasion you can also then utilize croaking counterpart here this again will be something that's going to be a little on the spicy side to maybe steal something that your opponent may have i don't know maybe like a shield raid, but also will make it a frog too so it does actually go well with our game plan to introduce a little bit more variety we will then do a much more expensive option Option for our graveyard hate but it is a really really cool option here frog hemoth here is a great way because it has trample and haste and as you can see right here if it deals combat damage to a player you get to exile up to that many target cards from their graveyard being able to put plus one plus one counters on the frog hemoth for each creature that is exiled this way will also help us get a lot more pump and also we can gain life to stabilize this is actually an amazing finisher if we can of course get it to stick on the battlefield and with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I want to give on the deck. Move over, Merfolk. We finally have a new creature type that is definitely going to make a splash in the Simic color combination. But as you can see today, we thankfully have a, not only that, but this creature type definitely is a lot different than how Merfolk play. So it gives you a lot more of a differentiation if you are interested again in playing creatures, but maybe just don't want to do the same old, same old with Merfolk. To put it another way, if you are a fan of enter and leaving the battlefield triggers, if you are a fan of getting a ton of extra value and card draw, and if you're a fan of maybe playing a little on the dirtily side to just slowly build up not only that value I just mentioned, but to eventually just to overwhelm your opponent and get a sneaky win out of nowhere with maybe an unblockable frog, then I would definitely say, give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to then put down a ton of frogs on the battlefield and then make sure to blink them back and forth to overwhelm your opponent with the amount of value you have, you'll definitely have a lot of fun doing so and you'll be very surprised at how you can pull it off. And I assure you, not only will you have fun doing it, but you'll definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!